Today we're going to talk about 16 Bible verses on being thankful. 16 Bible verses on being thankful. Lena, you want to come and get the mic? Because i got 16 people that Lena's picked out that are going to share the scripture with you. Okay, so when I say number one, you're going to go to number one and when, each person. So hopefully if she gave you one, get ready. And you need to stand up and you need to say it in the mic. Michael, be ready to make them loud if they're uh, a little shy with the mic. Okay, and uh, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to talk about 16 Bible verses on Thanksgiving. So by the time I talk about each one, we should get out of here right before the Bengals game. Just kidding. Um, but um, I'm excited about being thankful. And, you know, this is a month about being you know, thankful and Thanksgiving. And I just encourage you to, um, to listen to the, what the Word says here. Amen? So we're going number one, Lena. And this is what I want to say, that what I think is so neat is a song as, uh, Mary, what's the name of this song? Your name is glorious. And now listen to, and look at this scripture. Number one. Go ahead, oh put number God. one up, please. Oh, there. Lord God, we thank you and praise you for your glorious name. Oh, God, we thank you and praise you, praise your glorious name. We praise his glorious name. Huh? What'd you say? Oh, our God. Okay. What did I say? Oh, my God. Did I? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Kim. Uh, we thank you and praise your glorious name. Amen. Number two. Number two. Now, this is a little different one. It doesn't have the word thankful in it. But Psalms 20, verse 4. Go ahead, Jalen. May he grant your heart's desires and make all your plans succeed. May he grant your heart's desire. He grants them. You don't grant them, do you? He grants them. So many times we grant our own heart's desire, but he grants your heart's desire, which I, I love this. I wanted to say this real quick. It's his heart's, or it's your heart's desire, and he grants it. One time I heard a minister say, you know, what's the will of God for my life? I want to I do God's will for my life. And he said, he said, what's in your heart? Because God has already instilled that in your heart, what's your heart's desire. My heart's desire was to start an inner city ministry. My heart's desire was to help young people and help children. My heart's desire. That's my heart's desire. Okay? Number three. That I, is it okay, you got to say, the, say where, where it's found, too. Okay. Wait, I have to get it. Oh, Psalm 30, 12. That I might sing praises to you and not be silent. Oh, Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. I will give you thanks forever. Forever. That's all the time, guys. We give him thanks forever. All the time. And we sing out. We sing his praises. We sing his praises. It's about him. Amen? Number four. Number four, Lena. Do you feel like you're on Let's Make a Deal? <laughs> Psalms 104. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. I love this. How many of you guys remember that song? I love this song. Um, you know, when we enter into his gates with thanksgiving, that means we enter in into his presence. We enter into his presence and his way. We enter in with thanksgiving and go to his courts. How many times, I'm just going to say this, this is not a, a slam or anything, but how many times do we go to God without any thanksgiving? We just go to God, hey, God, it's me, I messed up. And I, you know, I went, how, how, what if we change that attitude and change it to, God, I don't have nothing. I, Give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. Let the whole world know what he has done. Okay, give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. Is God great? Man, he's great. He is awesome. So when we talk about how great he is, do we let the whole world know what he's done? Let the world know. Let everyone know. Let everyone have breath. Praise the Lord. You know, I, I can tell you all my problems and issues, but let me let me... Everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Amen. Number six. We're going pretty good here, aren't we? Psalms 106.1. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful. Boy, that's a word a lot of people have a problem with, faithful. 
He is faithful. You may not be, but He is. He is faithful. His faithful love endures every once in a while, sometimes, when we feel it, forever. Amen. How many of you guys ever heard that, um, heard that song from, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, he does praise him. Hold on one minute. i got to think of it. Uh, oh, praise him. Help me. David Crowder Band. You guys ever heard, heard the song forever? Forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. He's got a little cartoon with it, got little chickmunks, you know. But it's forever. It's forever. You know what forever is? Forever. Number seven. We got Clarence all the way back in the Amen corner back there. Psalms one eighteen one. Go ahead, Clarence. Give thanks to the Lord for he he is good, his faithful. Love, endurance, forever. Amen. Look at this, guys. He is good. So many things. How many people don't know God's good? You know, they used to do this. God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. He's good all the time. You may not be, but He is. He is good all the time. You know what? You know, sometimes we think He's angry with us. He's not angry with you. He's good all the time. Yeah. Amen? God. Number eight. Hey, Jesus. Amen. You, you go. You. Isaiah 12. This is one of my favorite ones. Isaiah 12, verse 4. In that wonderful day you will sing, thank the Lord, praise his name, tell the nations what he has done. Let them know how mighty he is. Amen. Tell the nations. Tell the nations. I knew she was going to go off on that one. I, I tell you, tell the nations. Tell everybody. Tell everybody. Tell everybody. Look at this, what he has done. Has he done something in you? Everybody, here, real quick, real quick. Watch this. Watch this. Everybody take a deep breath in. Everybody breathe out. Hallelujah. We're breathing. I'm not doing your funeral today. Hallelujah. I get to breathe today. Have you thanked him for your breath today? You're worried about your flat tire. You're breathing. You're, wor you're worried to get that bill paid. I'm alive. I get to pay the bill. Maybe. I don't know how it's going to happen, but God, it's yours. Praise his name. Thank him. Tell the nations is what he has done. He has changed my life. He has turned my family around. He has changed my. He has changed our whole lives. Man, we give him glory. Amen. Amen. Number nine. Yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. And they began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. As a result, their minds became dark and confused. Wow, I, I tell you, this, this, this one is deep, folks. If you can really read this. But this is, listen, it, grab a hold of the scripture. And if you want to go home and read, 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 first, or read Romans. But look at this. This is talking about people trying to make God the way they want him to be. Guess what? You know how many of you have tried to make Wendell the way he should be? How many people have tried to make, I remember many people has came to this church and they have left this church because they wanted this church to be a certain way. I'm sorry, I wish it could be that way you want it to be, but it's not. Amen. You know what I mean? I, I'm just saying this. I, I wish it could change the way you want it to be, but it's not. And when you start your own church, I always encourage people, when they get mad at me and they want to do that, and they say, Wendell, you need to do this, this, and this, I said, you know what? You need to go start your church. Go start. I encourage people to start. As a matter of fact, start it next door. I'll help you, I'll encourage, I'll call people to come to your church. If that's what, I, I'm being serious. I told a guy that, uh, that, that he's ministered here, not, not bad, nothing, but he feels called to Hamilton. I said, man, if you start your church next door, I'll help you promote it. I'm not being mean or nothing. It's just he has a different vision than I do, but that's okay. Listen, is all Hamilton saved? No. Man, we need more churches. We need more people. It may be something that you, you like that somebody else like. I know a guy, I talked to a guy, him and a friend are starting a church in a bar. And they, they go to the bar while the bar is going on, and they just sit there and read their Bible. And people come over and say, what are you guys doing? Well, we're just re What a minute. Now, that can be for everybody. I don't, don't encourage alcoholics to do that. You know what I mean? You, 
You know, you, you, you got to be called to do something like that. But um, I, he, he, they're reading this book called um, How to Knock Over a 7-Eleven. And it, this is written by a guy who wanted to start a church. And nobody in, the, nobody in this plant, uh, church planting meeting was together. So he walked out and there was a 7-Eleven there. And he said, you know what, I know how to knock that place over. I know how to go ahead and steal from that place. And he thought, wait a minute, I know how to do that. Why are we having problems trying to start a church? And so he started the church by learning how to knock over a 7-Eleven. And he's got this gigantic church now. He writes books. And he's got another book called Why, Why, Why Do We Kill Our Own? Something like that. And we, we do. We kill our own. We're the only group of people that kill our own. You know what I mean? You know, in, 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 in the spirit realm. But what I'm saying is these people right here, you know what? They knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as, as God and even give him thanks. Listen, you know how you can tell the difference between a Christian and a non-Christian? They give God thanks. They give God thanks. See, there's people that will tell you the way God should be and all this. But let me tell you what God is, and we should try to be like him more than we try to, try to form him. Well, you know, God's not this way, and he's that way. And, he, you, know, you know, you try to ball him up and put him the way you want him to be because, you know, this is what habits I've got, and this is what problems I You don't do that with God. God is, and you're not. And it's his way. I'm not going to say the highway because his way is about you. It's all about you. His way is all about you. Whether you go off just like these people were doing, where, you, where it, you know, they wouldn't even worship him as God, and they wouldn't even give him thanks. And they began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. How many times have you ever heard that? People say, well, you know, you know man, I, I, I've read the Bible. Uh, I, 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 I serve God. Why are you trying to prove it to me for, folks? You, know, you don't have to prove nothing to me. You need to talk to him. I, I'm just a human being, you know. Don't, don't, try to, don't try to put God in a box and say he's this way. God is far beyond. And if you want to learn more about him, the book that you got in your lap, the book you got at home, the, the, it's called a Bible, I encourage you to look at that if you want to learn what, about what God is. Lena, number 10. Tammy. Okay. 2 Corinthians 9.15. Thank God for this gift too wonderful for words. Thank God for this gift. Too wonderful for words. Have you ever been so thankful? Have you, have you ever seen a kid at Christmas time? They're like, when they see that gift, and they're going, ah, 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 ah. you know, there's YouTubes about them all the time. Ah, ah. His gifts are so far wonderful than words. You know, you know, it's so beyond. His gift, his love for you is so beyond. You know, Paul went to heaven. Had a, had a vision, and he went to heaven. He couldn't even talk when he came down. It was so magnificent, so magnificent, so great. Okay? Amen. Number 11. You're fine, Lena. You don't need to go to the gym tomorrow, will you? <laughs> right. Ephesians 5, 10, 20. And give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Give thanks to God the Father. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. When you give him thanks, give it in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. Your name has been written in the book of life. Okay, your name, boom, it's written in the book of life. Okay, that's your name. Okay, but do you know one of the things is our name don't hold much weight. It holds some weight. Like if I said, LeBron James, come on down here. I want you to talk to everybody here. Like, wow. Because his name holds weight. You know what I mean? That name holds weight. And sometimes, you know, I mean, but if I said, you know, Joe Smith, come here, you're like, who's Joe Smith? Because his name doesn't have weight to it. Our Lord Jesus Christ has the most weight of all. There's no other weight. There's us trying to be and put it all together and have our little bit of weight that we have. And then there is our Lord Jesus Christ that has weight. So when you thank him, thank him with his weight. God, I thank you. I, you know, I'm not, but I thank you in the name of Jesus that, that, that you have made me strong in my weak times. That you've became strong inside me because I'm so weak. I'm so weak in myself. You know, okay? So give him thanks. Number 12, Lena. Sorry, Lena. 
Aren't you glad I didn't do this with our mega church? <laughs> Philippians 4, verse 6. Okay, Don't can I just say, wait, 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 wait. Gabby, I'm glad you got this scripture because this is one of my favorite scriptures in the whole wide world. I love Philippians, but this is a scripture that I read almost daily because I can't do it. I'm trying, but I can't do it. Go ahead. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. I tell you what, don't you guys, you know, if I can re reverse this scripture the way we do it, uh, worry about everything and pray about nothing. <laughs> you know, I'm saying, I, you know, how am I going to get this done? How am I gonna, and, and he says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Pray about everything? What's everything? Uh, pray about everything. I'm talking about, I'm talking about, listen, I'm talking about hangnails. I guarantee if you had cancer, you'd pray. Amen. Pray about hangnails. He cares about your hangnail. What? Yeah, he cares about your hang. He, he, he loves you so much, he has the number of your hairs on your head counted. He knows who and what. He knows all about you. So for us to try to come up with, you know, what we should... Listen, tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. God, I need a car. God, I need my utility bill paid. God, I'm sick in my body. God, I, 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 I've got a headache. God, I've, I, 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 I've got a friend that I dearly love that needs you. God, I, I, I'm, I'm lonely, and I want a friend. I, I had a guy uh, message me two days ago, and he says, one day, he said, I'm alone. He said, I'm just lonely. And I, I, I just told him, you know, he wasn't here. I said, when you're, when you're uh, lonely, get alone with Jesus. It works, folks. It does. It, it does. It works. Get alone with Jesus. You're saying, I don't deserve to get alone with you. Let me tell you, it, it doesn't matter what you deserve and don't deserve because all of us deserve junk, but he, he took our place for that junk, okay? You don't deserve to talk to him, but he lets you talk to him. Isn't that crazy? I don't deserve to because I'm not good enough. I, I, I did bad. But he don't look at your behaviors like people do. He looks at your heart. Okay, so always remember that. God looks at your heart. Man looks at behaviors in a way good, bad, and ugly, Okay. God looks at the heart. That's why, let me just tell you this, I'll, give, I'll put a little insert there. That's why it's important if you want people to, to if you want to stand for Christ and you want to have a, a good look, remember people look on the outward appearance. So they will see you. So, you, you, you know, they will look at what you do. You know, you got to remember that. Okay, what's the next one? Thirteen. We're almost there. Colossians 3.15. Colossians 3.15. <clears throat> and let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your heart. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. Wow. How many, I mean, seriously, how many of you, if I could give you one thing and I gave you peace, nothing would bother you because you've got peace inside. You know, that peace that passes all understanding. The peace, you know... Uh, Jesus talked about peace I leave with you, peace I give unto you, not let the world give a give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. To have that inner peace, I'm talking about so good a peace that you're not bothered by anything. You're not bothered by, you're, you're, you, you just, you always give it to him and being thankful. Let me tell you what, that peace can come from him. We all need it. We have our good days and bad days. But always be thankful. Always be thankful. Amen? Fourteen. Colossians. Colossians 4, 2. Devote yourselves to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. Devote yourself to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. Folks, we need to have a thankful heart. Sometimes we say, hey, thank you. you know, thank you for having that. Let me tell you this. When you're being waited uh, at a table, food, you're getting food, and somebody says, somebody says to you, um, somebody says to you, you know, here's your food, and you say, thank you. It may have some weight to it, but it's really not. Hey, you know what? You're doing your job. I'll give you a tip. You know, that kind of thing. But if you have a flat tire, and cars just zoom by you, boom, 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 then all of a sudden that one person pulls over. And they, they get out, hey, let me change your tire for you. Let me, I'll just help you out. And they help you out. Boy, does that thank you? Wow. <laughs> Man, let me give you a 20. Let me give you a 50. Let me, man, thank you for stopping by. You, do you see what I'm saying? That, that, that is, is above and beyond. You know what I mean? I'll tell you one, that one of the toughest times that ever happened to me was when Michael was in college and her, one of her tires got stuck. And, you know, she was in Dallas. 
So she calls me up, Dad, my tire won't move. I say, oh, come on. It'll just right. uh, No, it won't. Now watch. She had to even prove it to me by filming it because I wouldn't believe her. Her tire wouldn't move. But see, I was in Hamilton. She was in Dallas, Texas. Now what do I do? So I start talking to her. And we, start to, we, we start working it out. But do you know how helpless I was to help her? I couldn't help her at all, especially after I found out that um, her drive to work in this crazy road, called, what was it, 35, Michaela? I-35. Uh, it's the most craziest thing you've ever seen. And she drove that in that little accent, that little matchbox. You know what I mean? And I'm like, what are you doing? You know, south, you know, south Dallas and went all the way over to Love. I'm like, that's crazy. It, it, it was the grace of God. See, I, I had no control there. When you get to the place where you have no control, that's when God can move inside you. You know, when you are weak, he becomes strong. See, we're, we're like, oh, we're, we're, God, you can have it. I, I've, oh, I've, got the, I've got the habit, man. I can handle the habit. You, you help me. You help save my life. I, you don't need to help me. No, he wants to help you with your habits. That's what I say. You, 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 you don't get uh, cleaned up to take a bath. You take a bath to get cleaned up. Go to God about everything. Let him know everything. Man, I got this problem. I got that problem. I got this. Yeah. He'll work with you on it. Amen? 15. I always thank my God when I pray for you. Fill him up. Wait a minute. Huh? Man, you, 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 kicked in, you kicked in that deep voice now, don't you? You got like brother's voice. Like, man. Okay, first put the pick in your hair. No, put it in your hair. I want to look good. Come on, come on, put it in there. There you go. Good, good. There, there you go. Okay, now, now, when you say it, it's Philemon and just Philemon. Philemon. I know it's crazy. I always think of McDonald's fish for some reason about this guy. But put it right up to your mouth. Put it right up to your mouth. Just go real slow. Philemon. Philemon. One four. One four. Now go ahead and say it. I always thank my God when I pray for you, Philemon. Good job. Fist bump. Thank you. All right. Philemon, I always thank my God when I pray for you. Let me tell you what. When you're praying for that person, that person may be dirty, nasty, horrible, evil. I don't care. Start thanking God. Watch what happens. Start thanking God for their life. God, I know Jared's not doing good. But Lord, I thank you for his life. I thank you for that change that's happening inside him. I thank you for what's happening in his life. And Lord, I just ask you right now to minister to him. When you pray, I always thank my God for the person. Number 16, Jackie. Don't get back here and preach on me now. Go First ahead. Thessalonians 5.18 Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Amen. Guys, do you want to know what God's will is? Right there. That is God's will for your life. God's will is for you to be thankful in all circumstances. In all circumstances, it's God's will. In all circumstances, be thankful to him. In all circumstances, be thankful to him. I want to tell you this. We went over all these thankful scriptures. And what's one thing we didn't do? What's one thing we didn't do? We didn't focus on ourselves, right, Kim? That's our problem. When you get into God's Word, stop focusing on you and your issues and your problems and focus on Him. For when you focus on your problems, your issues, your, pro- your, issue, your things you're dealing with, and this, that's what, that's, that's, I, I hear it all the time. I hear it all the time where there are problems, it's something that's inside us that makes us, it's, it's the world's way. And that's what Satan wants you to do, is to focus on you. You know, we, you know, we hear the word Satan, but you know, um, you know, he, in, in Isaiah, you want to hear about him falling from heaven when he was an angel. He said, I will be like the most high God. I. What's the middle letter in sin? I. I. It's not about, it's about him. And when we focus all on him, because guess what? He's all about you. He's all about you. He, he, he knows your situations, your problems, and he wants you to be lifted up. Let's all.